As you know, one of the things that I love the most are extreme horror films, and in particular, any that seem to be very sick and disturbing. So you've probably heard of all the classics, Salo, uh, Cannibal Holocaust, a Serbian film. So I wanna give you some suggestions on some of the more underground films, which might be a little bit more difficult to come by, but I assure you, if you love extreme, you're gonna love these, well, Maybe love is not quite the right word, but you get what I mean. The first recommendation I have for you today is a film called Mum and Dad, which was from 2008. It was first shown at Fright Fest Festival, which is a London-based horror film festival for any of you that aren't in the UK. It was directed by Stephen Scheel, and it's not to be confused for the 2017 film of a similar name, but it's Mom and Dad, American spelling with a O, not a U, which stars Nick Cage. Don't get them confused, they're very, very different films. Mom and Dad is a, oh, how to put this, a lovely little family film. We follow um, an airport worker uh, who gets a lift home with one of her colleagues uh, and they invite her in. And there she gets introduced to Mum and Dad, who are, let's, let's not lie, they're kind of not your conventional uh, parents and they have some unconventional styles. In the film, there is a lot of torture, there's a lot of abuse, there's a lot of fucked up stuff just going on in this household. And I think the first time I saw it, I was completely unprepared for what I was going to see. It's so grimy, it's so gritty, it's raw, it feels very real. And I think it's a film that often doesn't get mentioned very much, um, but it is very, very nasty. And if you can find it, I would highly recommend that you check it out. The next film on the list is a personal favorite of mine, and that is none other than a film from 2012 called Thanatomorphos. And yes, I will make sure that that is in the notes because spelling it is a little more difficult than saying it. It's a Canadian movie and it's from Eric Farladau. It basically follows a young woman who, it's never truly explained what's wrong with her, uh, but she has some kind of bodily disease, I suppose, where she basically, she just starts rotting. She's completely alive and she gradually, over the course of the film, starts to rot more and more and more. And we see her as she deteriorates through this film. So there's quite a few gnarly scenes in there, as you can imagine, from watching someone gradually rot. But I think one of the scenes, and spoiler alerts, one of the scenes that really fucked me up is where she's giving a blowjob. Yes, there's a lot of vaginas and sex and uh, sexual imagery, especially in the ceiling. You have to watch it to find out. But she's giving a blowjob to a exceptionally, he's a bastard, an absolute bastard and he grabs her head, finds a little rotten hole, and decides to put his finger in there, uh, which is, eh, pretty nasty. I mean, it's a good, you know, it's like a little bowling ball, good for the kind of uh, holding on, I, I guess. But yeah, that scene was really gross. And then afterwards she vomits cum. It's a sad film, it is. It's quite uh, it's quite heartbreaking in its own way, but it is, it's got a lot of fantastic effects, very, very gruesome, a lot of graphic detail on her body parts. Um, and I think it's just a, a far more intelligent and well-made film than it looks on first uh, glances, I suppose. Okay. Next film on the list, three out of five, is a film called Seven Days. This is from 2010. Again, it's another Canadian film. It's made by Daniel Grau, and it's based on a book uh, called Les Sept Jours du Talion by Patrick Senecal. So it's, it's quite a gruelling film, and I think the premise of it is it's not very nice it deals with child abuse and child torture so if you you know if you're triggered by something like that it's perhaps one to take note of or or completely avoid whatever works best for you and it follows the father of the girl who is found 
murdered after she's been tortured. Not too much of a spoiler, that happens very, very early on in the film. What he does is he goes out of his way to find the the child murderer, uh, the, the, the person that did the horrific crime to his daughter, and then he spends the next seven days torturing him. So you might be thinking this is a purely a torture porn film, but actually it's not. So there are elements of torture in this film, but I think what you'll find is actually there's a lot more psychological elements and it's not as violent or graphically detailed when it comes to the torture as it could be. Not to say there aren't some scenes, there are certainly some scenes in there that will get your stomach churning, um, that's for certain, and it wouldn't be on this list if it didn't, but I think it's a lot more, it's a bit, it goes a bit deeper than that, you know, you're not watching Hostel, you're not just watching pure torture porn, you're watching a little bit more, and you really begin to understand how the father is feeling, the conflicted feelings he has against, you know, what he's doing, whether it's right, the morals behind it. And I think actually, you know, it's a film that brings up a lot of questions and poses a lot of questions to the viewer on what is okay to do. Is it an eye for an eye? Or should you just leave someone like that to be, you know, for justice to get them through the through the policing system, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Really interesting concept very good film and perhaps one that's better for some of you that maybe don't want to watch just like pure torture and abuse and nastiness um yeah definitely check out seven days okay number four on the list is a film called flowers sounds beautiful but <laughs> you'll find out otherwise this is a film by phil stevens and it came out in 2015 so another independent film on the list and it's an experimental surrealist film it's almost like kind of watching um a really fucked up nightmare which you know is uh perfect for the daytime really it follows six women as they they begin to discover things about the environment that they find themselves in, about themselves, um, and about what's happened to them. So they kind of, for instance, the first girl, she wakes up and she's crawling through this house, through kind of the walls and the basement, and there's, there's a lot of goo and skulls and blood and visceral and all this stuff um effects again out of this world absolutely incredible effects which really look very very real and they yeah you can you can just imagine feeling all the goo that she's feeling um and then she ends up in a bathroom and she finds photographs and it's it's really interesting the way that phil has made this film it's not your typical kind of extreme uh film with a very linear plot to it it's it's very different to that it follows uh a different kind of way of explaining what happened to these six women uh, and what's you know what is the story behind that i don't want to give too much away because i think it's a film that you need to watch it and go on their their journeys with them uh, to discover what happened to them otherwise you kind of lose the magic of the film so i'm not going to say any more but definitely check out flowers by phil stevens final film on the list part one this part is Long Pigs from 2017. This is by a director called Nathan Himes and it's a mockumentary, which, hmm, a lot of people that have seen this, and there's not a lot of people that have seen this film, but the ones that have, uh, <laughs> they often say it's quite funny. I personally didn't find it that funny. I found it pretty fucking disturbing, to be honest. It's similar to something like August Underground, um, but rather than it being a, you know, a pure found footage, them filming themselves, it's about a couple of college kids who want to document a serial killer. Uh, so they ask him, they go along and they start recording him. And as you can guess, what happens when you record a serial killer? You're probably in a lot of danger doing so, which they begin to realize as they document him uh, killing people and then um, 
disposing of their bodies and there's a particularly I mean there's lots of disturbing scenes but there's a particularly disturbing scene in the basement uh, where the serial killer has I believe it's a woman from memory but it could be a man has a body gender doesn't matter hung up by the legs kind of in a if you've ever seen terrifier it's a similar kind of thing but long Picks did it first sorry art and yeah he basically just starts <laughs> hacking and sawing the body into pieces which hmm is it cute depends what you're into no it's not cute um well <laughs> It is really fucked up and the effects, again, all of these films, it seems like all these and independent films have incredible special effects and I think it's because they, they don't rely on CGI and stuff, they really have to make these. So anyway, that scene is awesome and if you're a gore whore and a gore fiend and you love seeing um, bodies be hacked into pieces, Long Pigs is where it's at. So that is five of the most sick and disturbing horror films ever made. Independent ones, underground, you might have not heard of them, you might have heard of them. Um, where to find them, I'll try and find out for you and leave that in the uh, notes section, but a lot of them are a bit more difficult to acquire. Uh, you might have to go out and, and buy some physical media if you want to check these out, but I guarantee you now it'll be well, well worth it. In part two, we're going to be looking at another five sick and disturbing independent horror films, which I cannot wait to tell you all about. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you thought this was a pile of shit, which you might have. Also, do leave me a comment and let me know what your suggestions would be for some more underground sick and disturbing movies. I'd love for you to suggest some that perhaps I haven't seen and can include on a future episode. Bye for now.